Welcome to another episode of Two Minute Tuesday. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about how I incorporate balance training into my athletes' tennis programs. So I received this question on Instagram by one of our followers, Jay Layton, and I'll put a link to his Instagram handle below so you can give him a follow. And the question was, how do I incorporate balance training into my tennis athletes programs? Now, first of all, I think it's very important to understand that balance is an incredibly important neuromuscular quality that's required for the sport of tennis. Balance, particularly at very young ages, can be developed quite simply through learning how to play the sport itself. But as athletes develop through adolescence and into their senior years, I think it's very important to ensure that you are factoring in a number of different methods to improve balance. There are many ways in which you can develop this quality. There are many drills that you can do on the tennis court, on the running track, in the gym, and even at home. First, I think it's very important that we identify what causes poor balance. Now, for me, there are two main factors that contribute to an athlete's lack of balance. One of those is the inability to co-contract muscles. So that's teaching the body to neuromuscularly fire muscles simultaneously to help stabilize joints in specific scenarios on the tennis court. Secondly, is the inability of the athlete to absorb force eccentrically, primarily through the legs. So looking at the second one first, it's very, very important in my opinion that athletes are carrying out a rigorous and structured strength training program that has a significant emphasis on developing unilateral leg strength. More specifically, these leg strength exercises should be very, very heavy in order to overload tissues and produce enough of a stimulus to develop the neuromuscular system. Even more importantly, I think it's essential that the athletes place focus on the eccentric element of every lift. There are then two ways in which I believe athletes should focus on in order to develop eccentric strength. One of those is to make sure that you are putting enough weight on the bar to, of course, make the exercise challenging enough. And then the athlete is to very slowly lower themselves into the bottom position of that rep. And more specifically, focus on the tempo and control of the eccentric element of that repetition. So the descent might occur over a period of three to five seconds, for example. Secondly, and talking about the same exercise, is to overload the eccentric elements. And you can do this either by using eccentric hooks, which I've discussed in previous videos, or alternatively, you can use the likes of bands and chains, accommodating resistance. Specifically, talking about chains in this instance, chains will overload the joint angles in which are more specific to the athlete's position on the tennis court. As the individual lowers down to the very bottom of the repetition, the exercise is gonna become that little bit easier so they still have the capacity to be able to focus on the upward or concentric element of the repetition. The next way to improve balance is to ensure that your neuromuscular system is capable of allowing your muscles to co-contract. More specifically, allow multiple muscles to contract in order to produce stability at the joint. Now, a lot of people tend to try and do this by using unstable surface training, whether that be standing on a BOSU ball or an Urex pad and producing some element of instability. I'm not a big believer in using those. They're okay for rehabilitation techniques following an injury or return from injury. In my opinion, these training methods should not be a regular part of athletes' training programs, primarily because we do not compete on unstable surfaces. Much more appropriate way is to use the likes of an aquabag. Using an aquabag still allows us to produce an enormous amount of ground reaction forces because the ground that we're training on is solid just like that of a tennis court. But the aquabag creates perturbations or the water sloshing around within the aquabag that creates that element of instability. This develops the neuromuscular system's ability to allow the muscles to co-contract or quite simply speaking, allow multiple muscles to contract simultaneously, therefore producing more stability at the joint and creating a nice, upright, robust athletic posture despite the elements of instability being created by the aquabag. There are other exercises and methods that you can use, such as the hanging band technique, but I won't get into that in this short video. The main takeaway for today's video is that you should be incorporating heavy strength training with an element of focus on the eccentric aspect of the repetitions, particularly through that of single leg exercises, such as the rear foot elevated split squat. My other recommendation is to use perturbation type training, such as use of the aqua bag in a variety of different exercises while still training on a solid surface, but creating instability through the object that you're lifting. These two methods combined into a decent strength training program that is utilized around three to four times per week, in my opinion, is a really good way to complement on-court training and improve balance reduce injury risk and improve efficient movement on the tennis court. Thanks for watching as always. Please do hit the subscribe button below as well as the bell icon next to that in order to get notified of our next release.